Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. This is basically a video showing how to make an armature for masks or faces. Um, I want to show you this because I'm going to be making a lot of faces or masks, whatever you want to call them, here in the future. And I want to show you exactly how I have everything set up in case you want to follow along. Okay, so first before I talk about the actual armature, the face, the mask, uh, I want to talk about how I have it set up right here. Um, I've done this once before with a tiger face when I made a tiger face. Uh, it was a little different because I taped foil to this turntable. Um, whereas in this new way, I'm going to be just using epoxy sculpt to create like a shell that I'll just like stick on there using plastiline clay. Um, this this is a very rigid strong armature and it allows for better refining and shape and saving material and stuff uh, but you're probably wondering um, why do I have a turntable attached to a a-frame simple just folding two pieces of wood with a wire to keep it from going open too much normally I sculpt with this on the on the table but when you're making a face, it's kind of an awkward position to be sculpting. You you just as if you were doing um like a makeup artist, you want to be right in front of the person. They're not going to be laying down on a table or something. So I have it upright like this at an angle to make it easier for me to work with. And but the, what's unique about this is if I want to work like say on the nose area up in the nose, I can orientate it any way I want. And this is a great setup, I think, for sculpting, you know, masks, face, or anything small that you would stick on here. And using this technique that I'm going to be showing you in this video, uh, creating the shell for this armature mask, it could be done for anything really, like a any shape, like a lightning bolt or a tribal piece, uh, uh, tribal art. If you can figure out the void of the space that is inside it um, you can create that using clay and just cover it with the epoxy sculpt just a quick um, off topic I want to show you how I did this starting from scratch you know setting it up and then just going with it but I want to do it live and I want to hear what you guys think about that about me going live um, I, th I thought my webcam, my webcam was really crappy and I was like, dang, I need to get a new webcam, but I didn't even realize that I could use my phone and just film live. So I've already retrofitted my mount to be able to, you know, use my phone and film some overhead film, you know, live sculpting. So what do you guys think about that? Let me know in the comments below. So back to this, I basically formed this shell by creating a face form that's very basic nothing specific it basically has two shallow areas for eye sockets and a, a tiny little hump for a nose maybe and maybe nothing right here in the mouth so you can build out on it big lips or whatever it is you want uh, like I mentioned if you're not trying to practice and you want to do something specific like a Ferengi off of Star Trek then you'd want to probably build out the air ears too and use that part of the as part of the armature uh, include it in the structure of the armature for extra strength to build a mask armature you're gonna need some kind of form to build upon and here I'm using plastiline clay it's a oil based clay it's not intended to be hard yeah it's actually can never be hard it's oil it if it gets hot it melts um, but uh, I'm using it I probably should have used polymer clay instead because it's not as sticky and messy and loose as this stuff but I chose to use this so this is what I'm going to be using in this video and I'm trying not to be very specific like I don't want to do an actual something you would easily recognize like ET or the idea behind this is for practice although you can do this for a finished product project so I'm just trying to make a generalized face, not 
too specific in anything. It does it does um have a very pronounced nose bridge, like uh like it could be a Klingon, you know, from Star Trek or something. Uh, just get just to give you an idea. Uh, and I'm just experimenting, trying different things. Uh, pretty much, in a nutshell, you're gonna want a recessed area for the nostrils, for the eye sockets, and for the mouth area. That way, if you wanna, this way you can come back and build eyes, and put teeth in, and do things, you know, like that. But you just form the basics into this plastiline clay and make sure everything's nice and clean and your edges are clean. Uh, I was starting to make this flat area underneath the chin, but I, I later didn't like it, so I cut it away. But you're just working with the clay and trying to get a good foundation that you can work on. You can also add any major parts that are coming off of it and that way that's for the next part where you make the epoxy shell it can all be done at one time and it's a unified item and I think it just would be better that way I didn't use these this was just an example these little designs coming off the head okay here we have epoxy sculpt this is a two-part material that when mixed together causes a you know chemical reaction and hardens it uh, you got about a 24 hour wait for it to be completely hard but it's got a good long work work time um, that information is more specific on the containers but you just want to use equal parts and mix them together okay something that I like to do when making any shell like structure is to roll out a tiny snake like this pretty small and stick it in this little channel that I cut in to the base of the structure using a cutout tool or a clean out tool. That way the clay can kind of go up in there a little bit. So when you add another sheet, you know, the sheet that covers it, it gives you an extra um, stability at the edge of the structure anyways. And for this part, uh, I rolled out the rest of it using a First, this polymer clay roller, then I use my pasta machine. But I do not recommend you using your pasta machine because if this stuff gets jammed up in there, it will be the end of it because it's, it's it gets very hard. So don't don't use that. Just use a jar, a glass jar. But if you haven't already used polymer clay on it, um, maybe lightly wipe it down with some cooking oil or something. You know, wipe it away really good. That way it has a slight film on it so this don't stick and just work with it it'll be harder to do it that way but you can get a, a nice thin layer for your if, if anything do smaller areas at a time use smaller amounts at a time to get the thickness that you want but I'm putting a um, a layer about I'd say the thinnest setting the setting second to the smallest setting whatever that is on the pasta machine and I covered this and I'm cutting it out to you know reveal the actual shape again and that piece that was up underneath it is now kind of doubled up thicker creating more strength on you know the bottom side of the shell which is kind of a flimsy area anyways so you just go through and you, you make sure you remove all the air bubbles and make sure you have it pressed down and reveal it to where it reveals all the impressions that were made too, like the eye sockets and stuff. Add little areas where I had to add some more where the sheet didn't quite cover. But if you do add a piece, you might want to slightly overlap one piece to another to guarantee you have you know plenty in the area then I just clean it up by um, taking my palette knife running it around getting the edge good again and one thing I recommend uh, any leftover epoxy sculpt you want to try to make something out of it I mean you don't want to just go waste into a hard ball what I like to do I like to make these little teeth or fangs Something that you could probably use in a future sculpture, and you never know. 
um, it's it's better than just you know letting it go to waste. But I I make me a bunch of teeth with this leftover uh, epoxy scalp. Who knows? Maybe I'll make another piranha plant or something. So here it is, ready to cure for 24 hours. I have it uh, all done and it's kind of cleaned up and everything looks pretty even and. Uh, here's to show you, I just can dry fit these uh, marbles in here and you can see how it offers a great foundation for you to start sculpting with, you know, for practice or finished results. So now I just have to wait for 24 hours and get hard. Okay, it has been 24 hours and this is completely hard and I had a bit of a... Um, I had trouble trying to get in, you know, it wouldn't let me in. I was trying to cut at it and I even brought out a knife, you know, and, and in the end, basically I just, uh, I, I didn't go really far with the knife thing. I put that away pretty quick. In the end, I, I just kind of gave it a real hard twist and it slowly just gave where it was sticking to that, where that plastiline is sticking to the marble. Um, looking at it now, I probably could have added a piece of maybe square styrofoam in the middle to reduce the amount of contact that clay has with the marble, you know, making it a little easier to remove it. But I, I do like how it held it firmly to create that. And this is what I meant earlier where this could probably be a little better if it was polymer clay instead of this plastiline. I'm pretty sure poly polymer clay would stick to the marble for me really well. Maybe if I add a little TLS to it or something to get it sticky. But that would be way easier to remove from the actual shell compared to this oil-like stuff. But basically I dug out as much as of it as I could. And what was left I just washed in the sink with some Dawn. And all that clay is still good. You know, I can use that clay again. I got to couple pounds of that plastiline that I can use for forms if I want if I don't use polymer clay in the future but that's it for this video guys uh, I'm sorry I didn't show you like all this crazy stuff but I just wanted to touch grounds with you um, I've been gone I've been remodeling the house if you like I do another walkthrough and I'll show you what I've done I have did some custom hand texturing uh, all new trim and stuff like baseboarding and stuff that goes around the doors and everything uh quite a bit it's been it's kept me quite busy and but i'm completely finished with it now and i feel like i can get back into doing this again sorry for being gone for so long but anyhow i appreciate you for taking the time to check this out uh let me know what you think about everything especially the live sculpting the idea of that and until next time, I will see you all again here real soon. Thank you so much for watching. You guys are awesome.